By the end of this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make something like this, where you can click a button and it changes the text and you add on to a main currency. Oh, this is so much fun. I'm stoked. I have 162 flasks, God damn it. Hello everyone, it is Cryptograns here. Welcome back to another 2021 Unity Idol Game tutorial video. This is episode one. So anyways, today we finally get started. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and turn on the bell for future notifications of videos and live streams. So here we are back with our empty layout here. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is create a canvas. And if you remember from the previous episode, to create a canvas, all you gotta do is just click this plus sign right here, go down to UI, and hit canvas and you can just leave it as canvas here and you can see it's very big cool tip for you guys is that you can press the f key when this is selected and it'll just move you right to it oh yeah this, this is the empty game object i forgot to delete okay so when you create a canvas you will get two things you'll have your canvas and an event system so an event system is basically just a way to tell your canvas that you are clicking on something in there. So here in your canvas, you'll see that you have a few things. You have a rec transform, a canvas component, a canvas scaler, and a graphic raycaster. So the rec transform is what we use to modify the size of things. And obviously you can't change the values of a canvas, the main canvas here but you will be able to do that with other game objects inside of it. The canvas component is what controls the rec transform here. So we can change the render mode to one of these three settings. Now you can make it a screen space camera, which is where it goes off of your camera. However, I highly do not recommend it. So you can see now the canvas is the same size of your camera. However, I don't recommend that. So let's just do overlay. Personally, that's what I've used in the past. I think that's a common theme as well. So what everyone else's use is the overlay. Next thing is pixel perfect. So basically it's make things look sharper. We don't really need it because it won't change things that much. And it'll just use a little bit of CPU. So the canvas scaler. So this is something we're gonna have to adjust. So right now it's on a constant pixel size. However, we wanna scale with the, uh, an actual screen size here. So by default, it'll put it at 800 by 600. I'm gonna throw mine, at, I don't know. 1920 by 1080. Now this really depends if your game's gonna be a mobile game or a desktop game. So if it's gonna be like a tall um, mobile game like, like like this, then I would set your reference resolution to whatever that is, like 640 by 1136, like that. Now you wanna change this now because <laughs> if you start setting up your game, all the interface and you start changing this, it will really mess things up, okay? So I'm gonna keep mine I'm gonna make mine a desktop game. So this is the reference resolution and we can actually shrink this to like 1280 by 720. I think that's fine. Also, if you hover over these things, it can explain to you, at least in Unity 2020, it can explain to you what these things are. And we can leave screen match mode. We can leave the match like that. And reference pixels per unit. I have never really had to change that, but we can leave it to 100. And the graphic raycaster we can leave as is. So this is what actually talks to the event system. They communicate between each other. So if you click on the canvas, the canvas is gonna, oh, it clicked there. So also make sure to save very often. So I tend to, whenever I add something, I save it just cause it's become a habit and I know that I'm safe. So you wanna save as much as possible, which is control S for Windows and command S for Mac. Cool, now that we set up our canvas, we can now start with the actual interface. So the first thing we're gonna create is a text and that will display our currency. So you have two ways of doing this. You can click on the plus right here and go to UI and text, text mesh pro. Now we're not gonna use the normal text because Unity's text is kind of outdated and it's, yeah, you could do so much more with text mesh pro. So we're gonna be using text mesh pro and I really recommend you get into the habit of that now because because it really messes up with 4K devices if you use the normal Unity text. But the main way I like to do this is right clicking on the canvas going to UI and text text mesh pro. So you may see this pop up here, the TMP importer. You just wanna click on that import TMP essentials. Cool, so now once you import it, you should see your text just fine like that. You can mess with the settings. I'm not gonna explain all of them. You can go through them yourself and some of them should be really self-explanatory. Okay, so now we can just drag this text wherever you want to. So as I was explaining one of the previous episodes that you can drag this text box by grabbing the corners and extending it like this, or you can just grab the middle of it and you can drag like this. And you can also move, use the move tool and do the same thing here. 
However, I also like to type in my values manually in the rect transform. So I'm gonna put my uh, position X at zero so it could center it. And I'm just gonna move this up higher. And then we can also move the anchor as well. So here you can anchor this to a specific side of the canvas or you can stretch it. So I'm gonna anchor mine to the top of the screen because that's where I want my money text. So I'm gonna anchor this to the top. Later in the series, I'll explain more about how to use anchors and what all of them mean. Okay, so I'm gonna stretch this text like that. And we're just going to align our text to the middle like that and in the middle of the text on the Y direction. So here we have our text, this says new text right now. I'm gonna change it to something like, I'm just gonna do zero, let's do this, let's do zero flask. So I'm gonna use some of my old assets for this tutorial, but we're gonna use flask for this. And I'm gonna rename this text to our flask test, and this will be our main currency, so this will be the flask currency text. So right now that's anchored at the top, so if we adjust the size of this, it will always stick to the top regardless of where it is, like that. So next we're gonna create this button so we can increment our flask by one. And I'm gonna to go to canvas, right click, UI, and do button text mesh pro. So now we have a button with the text mesh pro text inside it. It's the exact same button, except like a, a Unity's normal buttons, but except it has a text mesh pro text inside that. So obviously our game is gonna be kind of boring at first, but once we get things going, once we learn more, we will figure things out eventually. Okay, so now in this button text, I'm going to resize this to make it a little bigger. And I'm just gonna do plus one flask. And I'm also gonna make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so now that we have our main text and our button, we can finally create our first script. So what we're gonna do is head to our project tab right here and go to the scripts folder that I created. If you don't have a scripts folder already, just head to your assets, right click on it, hover over create, hover on create, and then click on folder, and then you can just rename it. So to create a script, our C sharp script, you need to right click on scripts, create, and C sharp script. And I'm just gonna rename this controller. Now the reason why I'm calling this controller is because later on we're gonna start to diverge from this. We're gonna have other scripts accessing the controller. So this will kind of be our brain of our, of our game. So it's gonna control everything. So in the past, one of the issues I've had is just doing everything in one script. And that's just very, 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 very wrong, okay? So we're eventually gonna just split our scripts into like upgrades, prestige, settings, data, and then we're gonna have the controller where it's basically like the, the powerhouse of all of that. It's gonna be controlling everything. Okay, so for now in our controller script, we're gonna be doing stuff in here. So in order to add our text and our button and to get our button to actually do something, let's add our text first. So I'm gonna get rid of all of this and get rid of the first top two lines since we are not using those. These are generally for creating lists, which we will get to definitely later on in the series. So in order to add our text, we actually need to import the Text Mesh Pro namespace in here. So a namespace is basically where it just has a bunch of objects or classes inside them. So like the Unity Engine dot UI, this basically has all your text, like the Unity's text, Unity's image, buttons, outlines, stuff like that. That has all those all those components inside the Unity Engine.UI namespace. However, we're not going to be using this right now. We're going to be adding the using TM Pro namespace, and that is for accessing our Text Mesh Pro text. So now how do we access this text? Well, we got to create a Text Mesh Pro text. So we just do public and then we do TMP text. Now this stands for text match pro underscore text. And we're just gonna name this the flask text. This is our main currency text here. And I'm gonna explain what this public means later on. So next we need to get this flask text to update. So we're gonna create ourselves a method. So a method is where we actually do stuff in. It's like a function. Okay, so in order to do this, we're gonna be using Unity's predefined update method. And this occurs every frame. So this method will be public void updates. And I will also explain what void means in a different episode. So now that we have update defined, this will be called every single frame because of mono behavior. And that comes from Unity. So let's just say we wanna update our text, okay? So we're just gonna put our flask text in here. And to change the text, we need to access the text variable or the property inside of here. And I'll also explain what properties are too later on. But for now, we'll just say that it's a variable that we can change. So if we go to our TMP text, we can see that this is our text right here. We can also change the color. 
We can also change the font size. And I'm pretty sure we can change the alignment too. We got a lot we can change here. But for now, we're just gonna change our text. So I'm just gonna set this as zero flask. Now, obviously this won't change anything here, but for now we wanna make sure this works. So next, well, we can't just hit play yet. We actually have to add our script to our game. So in order to do that, I'm gonna create an empty game object. So this time I'm gonna create the plus and then create empty. And I'm gonna call this scripts. So this is gonna be like a little folder. And I'm just gonna reset the position to zero, zero, zero. And in here, I'm gonna create another empty object. And this one's gonna be called the controller. So one benefit of doing this is that, let's say I assign a script to a button. If I were to turn this game object off, that script no longer runs because it is basically turned off. So now we know that these are always gonna be on and this is gonna be actually part of the game. So it's kind of crucial if they're always on. So now in our controller, we're gonna hit add components and we're just gonna search up our script. Controller and just click on it and there you go. So now that we can see that our flask text is in here. So what we're going to do here is drag this flask currency text in this box. And there you go. So now it should update on every frame. However, it's just going to show the exact same thing here. So let's get it to do something. So in here, let's create a variable. Let's create a double variable in here. So double is basically a large number. I'm gonna explain all the different types of variables in a different episode. But for now, you can just say that this is one of the biggest variables that C Sharp comes with. We are going to remove this zero and just do flask plus and then flask here. So now basically it's going to tell us that, so now basically the text is always gonna to equal to whatever this variable is here and then flask, okay? So now let's change this number. Let's get this button here to actually do something. So how do we do that? Well, we need to make a method for that. We need to make our own this time. So we can call this whatever we want to. Now, the one thing that some tutorials did in the past is that they, they kind of didn't explain that you can just make these whatever you want. So I always thought it had to be click in order for it to be a click button or a clickable button. So now, we can just call this whatever we want. We can literally just call this just a bunch of gibberish here and this will technically work. However, I don't think this will do. But for here, we're just gonna do generate flask just to give you an example name. Now in here, we're simply just going to add one to our flask. So we can do this in two different ways. We can either do plus equals one or we can do flask plus plus and then semicolon. So this basically just tells us that we can just add one. Now you can't just add more plus pluses or anything like that. This is only good if you know that you're always going to add only one. It's just a little bit shorter too. However, if this is gonna change from one to two or two to three at any point, then this is one you're gonna use this way. For this example, I'm just gonna do plus equals one because I know this is going to change in the meantime. So if we review our class real quick, our script here, basically, every frame it's going to display how many flasks we have and then when we click that button it'll call this method here and it'll add flask by one. However, we're not done yet. Let's hop back to Unity. So Unity is not going to automatically know what this method belongs to. We need to assign it to a button. So here we're going to go to our increment button and scroll down to our button component here and you can see the on click right here. So we're going to add a, a method to it and it requires an object here. We're just gonna drag our controller in here, which has the method in it, and let go. And then we're gonna assign a function, which is a method. I hate how they say no function, even though it's technically a method, but same thing. <laughs> so we're gonna click on no function, and go down to controller, and hit generate flask. This is the method that we made, remember, and save it. And now whenever we click this button, we should get one more flask. Let's play this, okay? Click, 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 woohoo. Cool, you made a very basic clicker game now. All right, so we're done with episode one. In episode 1.1, we're going to be explaining what classes are, and I'm gonna be creating a separate data class to store all of our variables in, such as flasks and upgrade stuff and much, much more. If you enjoyed this video and if you learned something new, make sure you smash that like button, show me some support, and also the more likes, the better. And also comment below your feedback, your questions, all that good stuff. Engagement makes this video grow, and that means more people will learn how to make an idle game in Unity.
Subscribe to my channel if you're new and if you enjoy this content. Turn on the bell for future notifications for videos and live streams. If you want to support me, click that join button down below or check out my Patreon in the description below. Anyways, I hope you guys all have a lovely day or night. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.